Hey guys, welcome back. Um, in this part, I'm going to look at uh, creating some materials inside Clear 3D and explain how I made the material set up for this that we have uh, in the final renders here. Um, in the last part, we made this bomber jacket and this time I'm going to explain how the material system works in Clear to get this type of result um, using a series of image textures that we're going to input. So um, this is the material system that we work with in Clear and these are the maps that we insert into each of these different slots. And these are what I've created in Photoshop um, to insert into each of these different parameters, basically. Um, most of these work on a system of using black and white information to either add or remove intensity of the roughness or the metallic, for example. And the normal map is what we're going to use to project the fabric details and to make this um, three-dimensional um, impression of the fabric. Um, to create this kind of liquid metal effect on the surface of the jacket. Um, the same applies for the logo. We have a normal map, we have a black and white mask that we can use, and we have a base texture. Um, so it's handy to have all three of these when we're work working to make a logo. And this is the base texture that I have inputted um, from uh, into Photoshop to make these textures with. So if we go into Photoshop, um, this is the image texture that I started with. Um, I made this from an image I found on the internet and set it up in a, in a repeat tile. And I, from this, I create my normal map like this. I create my um, height map, my displacement map. Um, I can make this as a metallic map and this as a roughness map. And then this as a, as a different intensity for the roughness map. Um, so I've created a series of different um, black and white maps as well as the normal map. And the way I make the um, black and white maps is to just take my image, press Control, Shift and U on the keyboard, and then press Control and L on the keyboard to bring up the levels and to desaturate the image. So now I can use these sliders to change how these gray, black and white values are kind of visible in order to make my different maps. Um, when I've settled on something I want, I can press Control and I on the keyboard to invert this texture. And then I could use Control and U to open up the hue saturation and change the lightness to make this lighter or darker, for example. So that's how I make these black and white maps. To make the normal map, um, quite simply, we go to Filter, 3D, Generate Normal Map. And with this, I keep my blur value relatively low and I keep my detail scale relatively low as well in order to have a, a small impression. If I push the detail scale up, the impression will become a lot deeper. Um, this is how I want my normal map to be set up. So I keep these values relatively low. Press OK to generate this normal map. Go then to filter 3D and then bump to generate um, a bump map from this. So this will be our displacement or our height map that we can use as well. And in this instance, I keep the blur relatively low to have a sharp enough edge around the displacement. And I keep the detail very high in this one in order to see these secondary shapes from the, the mid gray value. If this detail scale is too low, I really don't see much in the displacement. So I want to keep this quite high uh, in this instance, not too high that it becomes too raised, but enough that we keep the secondary detail in there as well. So I press OK to generate this one. Um, the one thing I do want to do is when I've got this normal map, I want to layer over this my fabric texture um, in order to be able to see the fabric surface as well as the uh, information that's been generated by this normal map as well. And the way I do that is to use one of these black and white maps. So if I go to this map, for example, and I press W on the keyboard to use the wand tool, I select the white and this will select all the white shapes. I can then go with this selection back to my um, base texture twill map and press control and X on the keyboard to delete this selection. Um, and then underneath this, I can then turn on the visibility of my other normal map. And now I have a combined normal map with both of these textures combined together. Um, I can reduce the intensity of this with the opacity value here, or I can use um, some of these blending options here. For now, this is going to work fine for what we want. Uh, and I have now a fabrics normal map 
I have my bump map and my, my other texture maps as well. So we can go now into flow. Um, I'm going to explain this just using um, this basic draped piece of fabric um, so that I can explain how each of these different parameters work. So if you choose your fabric on the right side, mine's called fabric two, um, under this we have our material and we've got the basic parameters here. So we have no image textures loaded yet. We just have this set to the color white. So if we choose the white here, we can change this to whatever color we want. So maybe this yellow, for example. And now we can start to add in our um, image textures that we've created. So if I go to roughness and I change the roughness here from intensity to map, I can now in this map section, choose a map. So if I open this up, I can choose, um, let's say this one here, press open. And now if we look at the surface of this fabric and I look at this in the light, you can see as the fabric moves, we have um, roughness information. We have shiny bits and we have matte bits in this from the way that this uh, this map is working. Um, I can increase the intensity of this with these sliders here. I can increase the reflection intensity a lot here as well to make this even more shiny. I can press invert to make this the other way. So now the base is shiny and the the little um, printed pieces are, are the opposite way. So this is how you work with the roughness so to add detail in terms of shiny and matte. Um, the next thing we can add is a metallic map. So if I open this up again and look for the metallic map, I can use um, the black and white values of this one. So the black base and then the white shapes should make the white shapes uh, become metallic. Um, we don't see any difference because the metalness slider is set to zero. So if I push this slider up, um, these these little areas will now look kind of like metal foil. And if I reduce this slider, they look a bit less metallic. So that's how we can control the metallic. Um, with this then in place, we can go up here to the normal map and I can open the normal map that we created in Photoshop, the combined one, and I press open here. And you see now these little foil pieces look raised on top. So if I push this up even further, they will look even more raised. And if I go the other way, they will look like uh, sunken impressions in the fabric. So I'm gonna push this up so they look raised and tall. Um, the last texture that I can, image texture I can show you how to work with is the opacity map. I don't really need it in this case, but I'll show you how it works. So anything that is black will be transparent and anything that is white will be um, visible. So if I open the, this same black and white image texture here and press open, um, you'll see now I'm left with just kind of um, almost like a mesh fabric where all the gold pieces are left intact, um, like floating on the surface and everything else is uh, transparent behind this. I could choose a different map and do it the other way. So I could choose this one with a white base and a black shape and open this. And now the base fabric is visible and the, the, the foil pieces have disappeared. Um, like I said, I don't really need to use the opacity in this instance, so I'm just going to turn that off, but that was how you would use an opacity map. Um, for the base color, I'm going to go here and open up the base color, which was this kind of green and purple one from before. And you'll see that this comes in now like dark green and bronze. And that's because of this color we added before. So any colors that we add will always be overlaid. So if I change this to pink, blue, whatever color, um, this is going to over kind of override our base texture. So if this is set to white, there's there's no override. This is just our base texture. And if I set this to a dark blue, this is our um, now our fabric texture. So I can press done to apply that texture, that color. Um, to then affect the scaling of this, I can go here in the 2D workspace and look at the edit 2D texture tool, which is T with the shortcut on the keyboard. And I can just drag this around now. Like I can drag this where I want it to be, or I can rotate this to a certain angle. Um, and I can use this slider here to zoom in and out of this um, design as well to make it bigger or smaller in the in the fabric view. So that's how we can change the um, the size of this. Just be aware that this works on a with transformations. So if I choose my fabric here and I look under these transformation settings for the the base texture on the normal map, 
um, they have the same angle, they have the same width, they, these have share the same transformation. But if I change these textures, these transformations might change, so you might get strange results. So always check that your transformations are both um, set to the same numbers. And if you bring all your maps in at the same time, like we just did, and transform in this way, they will all transform together. So this shouldn't be a problem. And this is how we set up the fabric. Um, I'm going to quickly set this up in the jacket we had last time. So this is the jacket we had before. And um, first thing we can do is just look at the sleeves. I'm going to go to the sleeve, go to the normal map, uh, go to my textures folder, choose the ripstop. This comes in, the transformation, like I said, has now reset in this instance. And I want this to be um, not 18 centimeters, but maybe one centimeter wide. Um, maybe two. So if I put two in here now, like we can see, um, this is a much smaller scale because it's it's what two centimeters repeated. Um, so that's setting the transformation for this. I'm going to bring the opacity down a little bit so that a little bit of light passes through this fabric because it will be very lightweight in reality. And I'm going to push the roughness down a little bit and the reflection up just to make this a bit more shiny and intense. So that's how I've kind of set up the sleeves um, for the body. This is what we just did. So I'm going to go back through this process quickly again. Um, I have the fabric preset to either fabric, mat, or leather, like whatever you want. In this case, we can set it to leather. Um, I'm going to choose my base texture, which was this one. I'm going to choose my normal map, which was this one. I'm going to come down, choose my... I don't want a displacement map or an opacity. I want to set a roughness map, so I'm going to set that here. Choose my roughness one. Down again to the metallic. Choose the metallic one, uh, which was this one. Uh, increase this metallic value all the way up so that we have a nice shiny metal fabric here now. And this map intensity on the reflection I might bring down a little bit just to make it shiny here. And then now that this is all set, I can go to the, the scaling of this. So if I zoom in here, I can see the scale in the 2D window. Go to the edit texture, edit 2D texture tool, click here, increase this scale quite a bit like this. And then I'm just going to drag this here so that I have a nice place to sit a logo inside. Okay. Um, I'll quickly now explain how the logo works. So if you want to add a displacement on a logo to make it look thick and raised, um, go to materials in the top, choose graphics, and then go to graphic 3D pattern. When the folder opens, choose your base color, you know, of your, your textures that you've created. And then just click in the pattern roughly where you want it to be centered. So I'm going to choose right here in this blank spot. And I'm going to set this to eight centimeters wide, the width and the, the height scaled automatically. So this will be the rough size of my um, logo. Press OK. Um, I can use the, two, the logo transform tool here on the side now. So with this tool selected, it's called um, transform graphic. I can move this around in the 3D view here as well as the 2D view. Um, to set up this now, we choose this um, logo on the right side, logo one. We have the texture imported already. We want to add a displacement map, which will be the black and white one, which is this one. Um, we'll choose the opacity map, which again is the black and white one, which is this one. Um, and now you see we have um, opacity around all the white spaces disappeared. Um, I'm going to just set the roughness quite low to make this shiny like the rest, and I'm going to set the metallic high so it looks metallic as well. I'm going to press, under texture, I'm going to press desaturate to turn the color off, to turn this basically to a white texture now. And I'm going to add the color of this dark blue that we had already, about here. And then we're going to add in the normal map. So that's the last map that we want to add, the logo normal map, and then I can push this quite high, and it'll look like there's a thick impression. But what we can do now with the displacement map is make this visible, um, visibly raised through through the displacement. So if we look at the displacement settings here, um, I'm going to enter one into the amount, a, amount in millimeters, one millimeter, and I'm going to bring the particle distance down to one as well and turn on keep continuity. So if I go now to render view, so if we go here, render, and I press this reload button to reset my render, we should see now that this logo is raised slightly above the surface of the fabric. It should be 
displaced. Yeah. So if I look at this from the side, you can see here that the space underneath. So I shift this back by minus 0 0.5 millimeters. As so we'll just pull that back close to the surface of the fabric. If I shift this back too far, it got to disappear. So I've got minus 0 0.5. Um, I could set the particle distance. Let's try for no. Put this back to one. Turn off keep continuity. Experiment with these settings with the clipping. You could enter maybe a, a low value. And let's see this from the front. And now we should have a quite nice displaced logo on our jacket that's the rest of this print. Um, and yeah, this is how we work with all the different types of materials inside 3D. Uh, from metallic roughness to um, working with normal and working with all the different types of images for fabric and logos. You guys should understand. So I hope this was useful for you. Um, in the next part, I'm going to look at creating some just for this. So um, see you guys there.